MJ Chris Chris Talk Show fifth episode. Oh, I'm so happy Timo was able to still help me out here. So, whew. all right, so we're gonna get started with the show. Let's get this show on the road, like Scott Rogowski says for HQ Trivia. We're gonna get started with the wonderful show, and let's get started with the intro. outside just a little bit in New York City. It just stopped right around 7 o'clock and it's 7.05 Eastern Standard Time. So welcome everybody to the wonderful show. And now today I'm going to get started with some news because there's been a lot of things going on, especially with gun violence. Um, the first thing that we're going to start with is Uvalde teacher who survived shootings. He speaks out. And we're gonna, with this news, we're going to go right into Good Morning America, which is ABC News. And we're going to get right to it. Let's get to it. Here we go. GMA 3. We're bringing a special spotlight on gun violence in America here at ABC News across all platforms today. And this all happens in the wake of what we saw in Uvalde. And the police there are facing mounting criticism over the response to that school shooting that left 19 kids and two teachers dead. One teacher, Rowak, I was there with you when you got word yesterday that you were going to be doing this interview with the teacher that was in there. And just knowing you were going to get the interview, your heart kind of dropped because you couldn't imagine what he was going to tell you. Yes, this is a, a teacher. He's been a teacher for 17 years. His sole goal was to, to help make these children into better, stronger, more educated kids. And, and he was not equipped to handle what happened in his classroom. You know, the, the class was enjoying. This was the last week of school. And then suddenly they faced the worst nightmare you can imagine. I just want to warn our viewers. It is, it is extremely difficult to hear him tell what happened in that classroom. I said... If I die, don't let it be in vain. Arnolfo Reyes, the fourth grade teacher in room 111 at Robb Elementary School, telling his story for the first time as he recovers in the hospital. It was our typical morning and, um, you know, we ate breakfast together. Reyes says May 24th started like any other day, except the students were celebrating. It was going to be a good day because it was going to be our day of awards. While some students went home after the ceremony, 11 from his class stayed behind. They were watching a movie when all of a sudden gunfire rang out. The kids started asking out loud, uh, Mr. Reyes, what is going on? And I said, I don't know what's going on, um, but let's go ahead and get under the table. Uh, get under the table and act like you're asleep. Um, as they were doing that and I was gathering them under the table and told them to act like they were going to sleep is about the time when I turned around and saw him standing there. Reyes shot twice, a bullet hitting him in the arm and lung and a separate one striking his back. The 17 year teaching veteran hitting the ground. I told my kids to act like I'm there asleep, so I'm going to act like I'm asleep also. While the horror was unfolding, parents outside begging for police to save their children. You know that there are kids, right? They're little kids. They don't know how to defend themselves. Did you feel abandoned in that moment by police, by the people who are supposed to protect you? Absolutely. After everything, I get more angry because you have a bulletproof vest. I had nothing. <laughs> so the shooter killed every single student in your classroom. Yes, ma'am. That's when I got you thinking, you know. This family lost one. This family lost one. I lost 11 that day. I do to my parents said, I'm sorry. I tried my best. 
Please don't be angry with me. Reyes says no training could have prepared them for this. Even though the school had extensive protocols, he says laws have to change. We trained our kids to sit under the table. And that's what I thought of, you know, at the time. But we set them up to be like ducks. You can give us all the training you want, but it's, uh, but laws have to change. He's making it his mission to honor the lives lost. I would not let these children and my co-workers die in vain. He wants gun laws to change. He wants the age that is required to purchase a gun to be risen beyond 18. You know, the shooter was 18 years old, a few days past his birthday, bought not one but two AR-15s, one of which was used in that mass shooting, and you can feel his pain and his anger. I want to point out, too, he's in back surgery today. He's had several surgeries already. He is a long road to physical recovery, but the emotional recovery, he says, and understandably so, he is scarred for life. He said he can never teach. He can never walk into a classroom again. That guilt he feels for being the only one who survived in that classroom. It is gut-wrenching, it is unthinkable, and our hearts and our prayers go out to him and what he's working through right now, having witnessed all of that. But he's saying, and look, we talk about the criticism of police, I know an investigation is going on, but the teacher is apologizing to the parents for his responsibility not protecting, and that's not something the parents have heard from police yet that is correct and then he very much said if they had come in to that classroom when they came in three times in the hallway they absolutely would have saved lives because that shooter was taking his time with multiple rounds of gunfire Uh, uh. well hey there gma fans robin roberts here thanks for checking out our youtube Alrighty. so um one of the things that i want to um go to is one of the people commented um here they should give guns to teachers um, and that was number five. So I would say that could be one thing that they could do. Um, but it also depends on the teacher's mental health as well. Um, and making sure that the teacher is in the right state of mind, that the teacher won't act out if they did have a gun. Because some schools do have school safety, like they do have in the elementary schools in New York City. Um, and they do have some staff and support. Um, but yes, teachers, I would say, sh- may should have the opportunity to have guns, especially if their mental health is in is, is in order, is how I would say it. Um, right. Um, okay, so now we're going to go into some uh, more updated news, and we're going to go into the next, um, the next topic here. Um, and the next topic is... Um, our Chris Jenner and Corey Gamble secretly made. You can find this news on E News um, with more information regarding that. Um, and now we're gonna, and that's the, that is the uh, that is the celebrity talk for the day. Is Chris Jenner and Corey Gamble secretly married? Woof. You can check that out. More information on E News. Next thing of news here is alleged gun trafficker accused of pulling firearms from North Carolina to New York City. And this information is done by none other than Bill Ritter um, himself. And we're gonna take a look at that right now. Cracking down on gun violence, or at least trying to. The latest case, a man accused of bringing dozens of illegal guns from another state into New York City and then selling them in New York City. And good evening, everyone, at 6 o'clock. I'm Bill Ritter. Liz is off tonight. New York might have some of the toughest gun laws in the nation, but the hard truth is a lot of the city's crimes are committed with illegal guns brought in from other states, states that for some reason have very few restrictions. A case in point tonight, a man charged now with trafficking guns from North Carolina to New York City and then selling three dozen of them to undercover cops. Police say when they arrested him, they found on him with an AR-15 AR-15 assault style rifle, a rifle used for hunting, hunting humans. I was news reporter Savan Kim live at NYPD headquarters in lower Manhattan tonight with our lead story. Savan. Bill, five semi-automatic pistols and an AR-15 style assault rifle with a high capacity magazine. They're among the dozens of guns seized by police from from an alleged gun trafficker who was about to unload them in the city. 36 guns worth over $40,000, pistols, revolvers, semi-automatic rifles, allegedly sold to an undercover cop in Harlem, trafficked from North Carolina along the Iron Pipeline up to the city. 
the alleged gun sales at a gas station right out in the open. Each time, Cologne had bags full of guns and made the sales in broad daylight in the middle of bustling Manhattan. Regular course of business. You could be pulling in for gas and you wouldn't even know what was going on. Investigators say 24-year-old Tyree Cologne sold guns to an undercover officer on three separate occasions over three months starting in February. And he was allegedly recruiting others to obtain permits to buy guns. Arrested in May, indicted today. Now facing more than 40 criminal counts. I want New Yorkers to know that we are now into our eighth consecutive week of steady declines of shootings in this city. Our gun arrests are at a 28-year high, and we've seized more than 3,000 guns since the start of this year. We are law enforcement partners rowing in the same direction, focusing on the types of cases that we are here today to talk about. Now, meanwhile, Cologne pleaded not guilty to the charges. When asked how police were tipped off to this alleged gun trafficking scheme, police officials say most of their tips come from the community. All right. Alrighty. Okay, so now we have more news. This time, we're, it's all within the same thing of guns and gun violence. We're going into breaking news from CNN um, with more information about what we talked about earlier. Four minutes. This is an interview you're about to hear with ABC News of a fourth grade teacher, Arnulfo Reyes, who says initially he, he who says he initially told his students to pretend that they were asleep when all of this began shortly after he came face to face with the gunman and was shot twice and then he played dead for over an hour. I told my kids to act like I'm there asleep so I'm gonna act like I'm asleep also. And I prayed and prayed that I would not hear none of my students talk. Did you, you, you thought you were going to die? Yes ma'am. One of the students from the next door classroom um, was saying, officer, we're in here, we're in here. And then, uh, but they had already left. And then um, he got up from, from my, behind my desk and he walked over there and he shot over there again. Uh, Rosa Flores joins us now from Uvalde, Texas. He also had some very strong words for the first responders, Rosa. He did, Poppy. Uh, He said that he can't forgive police because he says that he heard them outside this classroom in the hallway. He says he also heard children calling for help at the same time and then goes on to say the police probably didn't hear the children. Um, On this day, he also says, of course, this was a very normal day early on before the shooting unfolded uh, students were getting awards so parents were stopping by some of the parents took their children home that day i talked to people here who have said that their children asked them to go home even though they normally would want to stay at school there's so many things that were transpiring on this very day including these intense moments that this teacher describes when he says uh, to abc news that the children first heard the gunshots, asked him what was happening, what was going on. That's when he said that he told them to go under the table. And then he says that the shooter was right there in front of him and he started shooting first at the teacher. The teacher says that at that point he couldn't move. He got shot multiple times. And then he says that the shooter turned the weapon on his students. Take a listen. Just bullets everywhere, and then I just remember Border Patrol saying, um, get up, get up, and I couldn't get up. Did you feel abandoned in that moment by police, by the people who are supposed to protect you? Absolutely. After everything, I get more angry because you have a bulletproof vest. I had nothing. I had nothing. You're supposed to protect and serve. There is no excuse for their actions. And I will never forget them. I lost 11 that day. And I joined my parents and I'm sorry. 
I tried my best. <laughs> of what I was told to do. <laughs> Please don't be angry with me. Oh, Poppy and Jim, it's just gun-wrenching uh, to hear this teacher talk about those moments and then say sorry. He has nothing to say sorry for. Um, and, you know, he was talking about training. The governor of this state now asking all of the school resource officers to go train. But take the words from this teacher. He says laws need to change. There's only so much training that can happen. Laws in this state need to change is his message. This is an interview you're about to hear with ABC News of a fourth grade teacher, Arnulfo Reyes, who says... Alrighty. Um, well, Mr. Reyes, whew, um, hopefully things will get better for you. I'm happy that you're still alive with us here. Um, still, I hope, I'm happy that you're still alive with us. Um, right now we're going to go into... Ah, jeez, you just gonna take a break from that when you hear that and um, about the police officers and how he was stating that they didn't do anything. Um, but um, when we return, we're gonna get back with some fun news and some fun things about Disney Channel and how you should watch this wonderful show. And I've also spoken to people from this show and they're amazing people. And the show is just amazing with true life stories that actually go on in real household lives. We'll be right back right after this. We are back. Um, and now I want to discuss, uh, not discuss, but well, now I want to talk about this wonderful show. This is a wonderful theme song for the show. Um, it's called Raven's Home. As we know, we had that to Raven a long time ago, years back. And now there's this new Sarah and J. Christopher's talk show, 